Hey everybody, welcome to a new episode of Wall Street New Hustle. Today I want to talk about the Camp Lejeune contaminated water situation. Well, I decided to do a, a, a relative short video on this, hopefully, that me myself, I'm a Marine. I lived on Camp Lejeune for two years. This was in the 90s. I don't qualify. So the time frame is from 1953 to 1987. Um, and you had to have lived on Camp Lejeune for 30 days. Um, so what I'm starting to see here is that a lot of lawyers, attorney offices, are jumping on this. Every few seconds, you can see a commercial about a lawyer. They had these fancy commercials about Camp Lejeune contaminated water situation. And I'm trying to figure out who makes money off of this. And the short of it, the lawyers. They're going to make all the money. Now, supposedly, the government had... Uh, state that over a million persons are affected by this and um, the settlement between three to five billion dollars set aside for these cases you have two years that's from August of 2022 to August of 2024 to file a claim um, the thing about that is it could be a person that lived on Camp Lejeune who was based there or it could be a worker and by me living on Camp Lejeune, I know most of the contractors that didn't live on the base. They just came from Jacksonville. If they lived outside of Lejeune, wherever they lived, they drove in onto the base. Did they work for eight hours? If they did at all, and then they left. So I really don't know how they qualify, but supposedly they do. And so what I did here, I called three attorney offices to figure out how do we get paid. And I came with two different scenarios. One scenario was me as a as a contractor who lived on, I, I think I told him I lived on it for like 60 days. So that was 30 days over what I needed to do. And the second scenario was that my dad was a Marine. He was stationed there. I was born in like 1970 something. And so that mean I lived there at least 18 to 20 years before I moved on. Um, so I wanted the worst case scenario possible and the least. So the first two lawyers I called, um, I stayed on the phone for an average of 30 minutes apiece, and they wanted all my personal information, um, my name, my email, blah, blah, blah. And before I even got to talk about anything, and they put me on a, a, a callback list for an attorney to reach out to me. But the third one I talked to for probably about 20 some minutes, but you're going to hear the recording. Um, so I said, look, I don't want to talk all day. I know I qualify. So how do I get paid? So basically the attorney said that, well, call take whoever she was, said that it's 40% was their fee of each individual person or case. And they wanted to go with a class action lawsuit. And I said, well, a class action lawsuit, how do you determine me? Because I gave them scenario number three that my dad was a Marine. I lived there for 18, 20 years, blah, blah, blah. How does my case differ from somebody that's only worked on Camp Lejeune for 30 days and they didn't live on the base? And she really couldn't determine what my what my portion of the settlement would be. And if you all know, if you form or join a class action lawsuit, it's the total amount of people based on what the payout would be. So the government says about a million people qualify, which probably means about three to five million because the government always under under, you know, make numbers lower than what they are. So in the class action lawsuit, you probably won't know how many people are a part of that. So I asked her to give me a scenario. I said, if I make one hundred thousand dollars, my portion is one hundred thousand um, dollars. OK, how do I get paid? So the understanding was if you get any number like that, which would probably be a miracle, and you already receive benefits from the government, let's say you, the presumptive illnesses or cancers mostly under this um, new bill, and you are already getting compensated for cancer 10, 15, 20 years ago from the VA, and however much money you collected, let's say you collected $50,000 in VA benefits, that money is going to be deducted out of your settlement case. So that's how you're gonna get the money from. Now, more than likely than not, the VA is gonna have you on a list. Everybody that applies for these the case you have to submit your social security number, everything like that. And the VA is gonna keep a log of that. And you file for benefits that's in the future. And let's say if you already filed for cancer on a presumptive 10 years ago and you're still waiting, still fighting in the VA for the case. So now you sign to this class action lawsuit. Do you lose? your back pay from that 
if you get any money from this because once you sign on to this you're basically sign an agreement that you waive all rights for any future litigation behind this and that's the thing I, I don't like about this because if the government sits, sets aside five billion dollars and then the attorneys who don't know you really don't care about you at all and they say okay you know what let's cut a deal let's settle for two and a half billion dollars and they'll get their money quick and you may get a check for a thousand dollars five hundred dollars so I, I say that about class action lawsuit because I was part of one I lost twelve thousand dollars in a, a certain stock that I bought and two days ago I get a check I'm gonna cover some information here, but I get a check I don't know if you guys can see it but I'll post it on a thing this check was for three cent how am I gonna go to the bank and deposit a three cent check three cent I have no idea how many people was part of it or what the check was for three cent now the only people that really make out I say all the lawyers and the people that didn't really do anything while they was on the June made the contractors that worked for supposed to contract for 30 days and they never drank any of the water they just bought their own lunch they went out and, and left the base to go get lunch and they came back on and those people benefit the most because they have the least entitlement to these settlements and I just wanted to, to to bring this up because I'm listening to a radio the other day and a lawyer comes on. I'm in Maryland and he says he rented out a um, a hall, like a banquet hall, something like that, almost at a fire station. And he's inviting people to come down and fill out the paperwork so they can be a part of the class action lawsuit. Now, you and me who served in the Marine Corps, I lived on N Street, uh, Camp Lejeune, you know, 2nd Battalion. And you know... This is about the attorney selling, making a settlement with the government. You're not getting nothing. You might get a thousand dollars if you're lucky. <laughs> you might get a few hundred dollars, and it's not going to be anytime soon because the cutoff date is is two years from now, and this may be five, six, seven, eight years from now, or the or the government might say, look, look, lawyers, who I was the lead on the um on the case, say two and a half billion. Okay, that's it. Settle for that. You lawyers get paid. And you disperse the checks out to the veterans or, the, or your um, the people you're working for on the case. And this is not going to make you rich. It's not going to really benefit you at all. And how my understanding is that from 1953 to 1987, most of the veteran average age in 1953, there was a little bit younger than probably about 18 years old. At some point, people could join the military 16. But those persons are about 80 some years old from now, 80 years old by now. How many of them are still alive? Their children will probably be somewhere in, in the age age range when they 60s, maybe um, early 70s, late 50s, something like that. How many of those persons are still around? And you think about the grandkids. You know, they still entitled. And as I'm shooting this video right now, I'm looking at a commercial right here about the Camp Lejeune water. And I, I had to hit on this because a lot of many people have a lot of content on here about, you know, who qualifies and how this, but they don't tell you how you get paid. And what are the, the drawbacks from this? Because you are signing up for a legal case against the VA. And if you want to get benefits in the future for this, how does that affect you? Does, does the VA come back and say, okay, well, you are already a part of this class action lawsuit. You already waived your rights to any future claims for this, this presumptive disability under the Camp Lejeune Water Act. So I, I just wanted to make sure that, you know, you guys are aware of some of those things. Like I said, if you do get a summit, you know, you're going to have to pay some of that money back to the VA if they already compensated you. And how does it affect your future payments in the future? Because you are signing a legal agreement. Um, I myself, I lived in Camp Lejeune for two years and that was in the uh, mid 90s and it smelled like mildew. The buildings were old and rusty. And like I said, I lived on N, N Street right next to Onslow County Beach, 2nd Battalion headquarters. And things were worse back then, so no telling what, what still is going on in Camp Lejeune right now, or even those days. But um, like I said, I'll, I'll post the, um, the the video of the conversation I had with that attorney's office as well because I want to make sure you guys are get the gist of this. So 
this is wall street new hustle uh, please consider subscribing to the channel um hopefully we'll get to about thousand i think that's when you get monetized because the money will go to children and adults with special needs um so this is basically what this channel is all about it's not for me to make money i know a lot of people do these channels and they want to be rich and and please subscribe and they give you useless information and especially when it comes to the va and all i say is that a lot of content some is some are good some are not good veterans that served um prior to 2000 we're under a different realm a different level some veterans most of the veterans that's after that had the information had the access to what va benefits were when i got out in 97 i knew nothing about va benefits i never heard anybody talk about it we didn't have any computers <laughs> no cell phones no information whatsoever so it's easier for a new veteran who's still active or has been in for like 15 or so years or 20 years that can work on their benefits why they're still active so when they get out it's a whole lot easier to, to get 50 60 100 percent because they already built the case why they were still active on active duty for us older veterans we weren't built that way we didn't have information that way so when we got out that's why it's so much harder for us to fight for any benefits and the va can just dismiss us because we put the military ahead of our own needs and benefits but you guys be safe out there this is uh my episode of washington hustle if you are going to sign up for the camp Lejeune water contamination case make sure you get a punch list with that attorney how much are the fees what are your costs and see if they kind of can give you a breakdown of what you're entitled to but more likely than not to see the most money you're going to have to go file an individual case but that's much harder it's going to take a lot more effort on your part and the VA might easily um, have your litigation for forever. On well, class action lawsuit is easier. You're gonna get something, but you're not gonna get worth get the money that you're truly entitled to or worth because the lawyer's gonna settle. And all we're gonna do is have a lot of rich, even rich, more wealthy <laughs> attorneys than we already have already. And to be honest, it's a business. It's between the lawyers and the VA or the government they're gonna settle on something and like I said you might get a check for a hundred dollars five years from now maybe even seven eight years from now whatever you might get a check for a thousand dollars whatever one thing I say is that if you set that check for a thousand dollars or a hundred dollars well you actually to be honest you had no no say in the matter once you sign on to it whatever something is is also what it is Will that affect you getting benefits in the future? Will that negate any benefits you would have been entitled to because you signed actually a release to file any future claims in the future for those presumptive issues with the um, Water Act? Um, but like I said, you gotta be safe. Please consider subscribing to the channel. We want to build and grow and and, and help a lot of children with special needs. And guys, be safe out there. And I'll catch you on my next video. Thank you.